From the moment I walked through the door of Dr. Jonathan Blackwell's dental clinic, I knew something wasn't right. Despite the warm welcome I received from all the workers, there was something I didn't like in that environment. Call it foreboding, subconscious, what do I know? But I desperately needed that job as a receptionist, so I decided to ignore my instinct and move forward. Dr. Blackwell was a charming man, respected in the town and known for his skill in dentistry. People admired him and trusted him. His icy blue eyes gave me the impression that they were hiding something. But who was I to judge him? After all, I've still just arrived. At a first glance, the place looked like any other dental clinic. White painted walls, entertainment magazines stacked on the waiting room table, and catalogs of toothbrushes and toothpaste. The first patient I had to accompany and take the data was Marianne, a young woman with an infectious smile but who had a deep fear of dental procedures. Her hands were sweating and her heart was pounding, thinking about the great pain she was going to feel when I gave way. I called her name and she stood up with trembling steps. The door opened, revealing a well-lit treatment room and the friendly-looking dentist. The doctor had a calming presence with a soft voice that seemed to calm even the most restless. He explained the procedure patiently, making sure Marianne understood every step of the process. I was going to go back to the reception when the doctor asked me to stay there helping him. This way, I would also learn to work as an assistant in times when his assistant had to care for another patient. I stood there, paralyzed, watching everything he did. I grabbed Marianne's hand, who was very nervous, and I noticed how little by little she squeezed her fingers less tightly, as if her fear was dissipating as the dentist worked on her tooth. I didn't see him give her anesthesia at any time, but the young woman didn't seem to feel pain. The doctor smiled tenderly as he worked, as if he understood his patient's deepest fears and knew how to calm them. Marianne fell into a deep sleep. She seemed sedated. Then I finally found the courage to ask, how do you make it not hurt? The doctor paused his work and gave me a sympathetic look. The key is distraction. I have conversations with my patients, engaging them in stories while I work on their teeth. It seems that the power of the mind can overcome even physical pain. That explanation didn't make sense to me, although it was true that I had also been absorbed in his stories during the procedure. The feeling of security that the doctor exuded had enveloped me like a warm hug. As I relaxed, the treatment room seemed to take on a kind of magical glow. And I'm sure Marianne could also see flashes of color dancing in the air. The procedure came to an end and the patient stood up smiling, surprised by how easy everything had been. The doctor looked at her with a reassuring smile as if they shared a secret. Remember, Marianne, a smile can be the best medicine. And I'm here to make sure that smile never fades. The patient left the consultation with a feeling of wonder and gratitude. As I walked her to the door and handed her her coat and purse, I couldn't help but stare at her mouth, at the big smile that adorned her face. I asked myself, what was really behind a dentist's ability to maintain that peace of mind in his clients? Over the next few weeks, several clients visited Dr. Blackwell's office for various dental procedures. Every time I entered the treatment room to help him, I felt a familiar feeling of calm wash over me. The conversations with the dentist became deeper, and I began to tell him about my dreams and aspirations, my fears and joys. It seemed that the doctor was an exceptional listener, always attentive and empathetic. During the consultations, the dentist was professional and gentle. However, he often noticed that he had a strange interest in extracting teeth. He placed them in small wooden boxes and kept them in his office, as if they were treasures. Sometimes he even seemed to talk to them, murmuring incomprehensible words as he petted them. My co-workers noticed my concern, but mocked my suspicions. They told me that I was just imagining things, that the stress of having a new job was affecting me. I knew something was not right. As time went on, I noticed that clients' visits to the office not only alleviated their fears of dental procedures, 
but also help them confront their insecurities and gain self-confidence. I also began to notice changes in my daily life. A more positive attitude both in my relationships and at work. Even my friends noticed the renewed sparkle in my eyes and the glow in my smile. One day, while reviewing the next day's appointments, I missed the history of one of the clients. The doctor was having surgery, so in order not to bother him, I decided to go into his office to look for it. After finding it, I saw that on his table there was a file cabinet with many documents. Intrigued, I started flipping through it. It was full of stories about people who had visited the surgery and experienced amazing transformations. When the doctor finally left the office, I couldn't help but ask about those files. The doctor smiled, but that smile seemed fake. Most likely, he didn't like me looking through his things. At that moment, I thought about it and asked myself why I hadn't sewn two stitches in my mouth. She was a real loudmouth. I should have kept quiet and he would never find out. Contrary to what I thought, the doctor didn't scold me and explained that he had collected those stories over the years to inspire his patients and show them the power of the mind over the perception of pain and fear. The smile is a reflection of our soul, he told me. When we heal the soul, the smile becomes eternal. As I got deeper into the conversations with the dentist, I began to realize that there was something deeper at play. I noticed that his consultation seemed more typical of a psychologist than a dentist, with many patients sharing their stories and experiences. They all shared a strange, calm and optimistic disposition. I needed to know what mystery was there, if this was a hidden sect or what a strange purpose was behind so much enigmatic talk. So, at a time when all my colleagues were in consultation and there was no one in the waiting room, I decided to return to the doctor's office. On a shelf were several filing cabinets like the ones I have seen the first time, with detailed records of each patient and their transformations. Suddenly, the doctor's assistant walked in and found me looking at the files. The woman's expression changed completely and she closed the door quickly. I noticed a change in the atmosphere and gritting her teeth tightly. She grabbed the files and ordered me to get out of there immediately. Embarrassed at being caught, I left the filing cabinets in their place and walked out with my head down. That night, as I reflected on what I had seen, I began to put everything together. The stories of transformation, the strange feeling in the office and the office full of records. There was something else. A disturbing question took over my mind. What price was paid for that eternal smile and the healing of the soul? I fell into a state of internal conflict. On the one hand, I deeply appreciated the positive transformations I had experienced since being hired at Dr. Blackwell's office. On the other hand, the secret documents and the angry look of the dentist's assistant had aroused my suspicions. The next day, at one of the moments in which the doctor asked me for his help in the consultation, I found the right moment to ask him about those records again. The dentist seemed surprised, but after a moment's pause, his eyes filled with sadness. What I do here is help people find inner peace and happiness, he explained to me in a tone that seemed sincere. But you must understand that it is not a process without consequences. Each transformation comes with personal sacrifice. I looked at him uneasily, waiting for more details, and the doctor continued. Those people who find healing in my office become bearers of a secret. A secret that must be protected and transmitted through generations. It is the price they pay for their change. Then I felt a chill down my spine. What kind of secret could be so important? The doctor extended a hand to me. I understand this can be overwhelming. But you must also understand that the choice is always yours. You can choose to continue the path of transformation and accept the secret. Or you can choose not to know more and move on with your life. The decision weighed on my shoulders. On the one hand, I had found a new sense of confidence and joy in my life thanks to the consultations in which I helped a dentist. But on the other hand, I still didn't understand why. What was it that made me feel this way? I was not able to give him an answer and I left a direct consultation to my position at reception. I spent the entire morning debating the pros and cons. Did I need to know? 
Or would it be better to erase it and pretend that nothing had happened? What role would I play if I decided to enter the dark path that the doctor seemed to offer me? The day progressed slowly and my anxiety only grew. I watched the patients enter and leave the office with their radiant smiles and expressions of inner peace. I wondered if they had made the same decision that was before me now. The next day, I made a decision. When I arrived, I went to the doctor's office, knocked on the door, and he invited me in. I looked at him intently, determined, and at the same time scared, and told him that I wanted to know the secret. The man nodded solemnly and led me through a door that was hidden at the back of his closet. We arrived at a room where there was a figure covered in a black shroud. I shuddered as the doctor slowly approached and removed the shroud, revealing a corpse in an advanced state of decomposition. The dead man's eyes shone with an unearthly radiance and his mouth was forced into a disfigured smile. The dentist looked at me and said, this is the price of the eternal smile. Those who choose to know the secret become guardians of the curse, condemned to bear the weight of the truth. Horror overwhelmed me as I looked at the corpse. I began to back away, feeling nauseous and terrified. But the dentist grabbed me tightly and dragged me towards the body. I fought, screamed and begged, but my efforts were in vain before the strength of the man. He opened the corpse's mouth and pulled out a shiny, sharp object. It was a tooth. This is the tooth of origin. The doctor whispered with a voice full of joy. My screams echoed even louder when the dentist placed the tooth in his own mouth. Suddenly, a moan echoed through the room as the dentist's body began to twist and shift. His skin became pale and translucent, his eyes glowed, and his smile widened into a grotesque grimace. He turned to me and extended his hand. With a twisted smile on his face, the doctor confessed the truth to me. The stories in the diaries were mine. I had been performing gruesome rituals, pulling out teeth and carrying out inhuman acts. I had been in a trance, acting without being aware of my actions. I looked at myself in the reflection of a glass and saw a version of myself that I didn't recognize. I was freaking out with blood on my hands and a manic look in my eyes. The evidence was there. The diaries, the boxes of teeth, everything pointed to me as the author of the horrors I believe Dr. Blackwell was committing. The dentist's hysterical laughter rang through the air as he watched me complacently. He had become trapped in my own madness and there was no escape. I recoiled in horror, my tears mixing with my desperate screams. I turned and ran blindly down the dark passage, feeling the presence of the dentist lurking behind me. I managed to escape from there, but I found myself trapped in a nightmare. The images of the macabre revelation I had witnessed in that dark place continued to haunt me, like demons in my worst dreams. The nights became torment. I saw the twisted faces of the patients who had been subjected to the dentist and myself. I knew that I too was sustained by sin and guilt took hold of me. In my searches to try to unmask a dentist, I discovered a series of even darker horrors. The transformed patients not only performed terrible acts on the dentist and my orders, but they had left their humanity behind and their only satisfaction lay in causing pain to others. These stories I heard terrified me to the core of my being. There were patients who had tortured their loved ones, others who had performed bloody rituals in our name, and some who had offered themselves as human sacrifices. My colleagues at the clinic, who had once pretended to be my friends, had turned into monsters. And I, with my eternal smile and my icy eyes, had become another one. When I left that cursed place, I realized that I would never be the same again. I had seen the true darkness that can exist in the human heart, and now I wore an eternal smile as a reminder of my own sin. Dr. Blackwell's curse had left its mark on me, and I would never escape the shadows I had embraced. In that moment, I understood that true evil is not always hidden in others. Sometimes it is in ourselves, hidden behind a mask of sanity. My fate was sealed, and I would never leave that dental clinic. 
If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to see more Draw My Life videos, subscribe to our channel. See you in the next episode!